<laughs> Hello and welcome back to Bamba Bridge FC TV and thanks for tuning in to our debut episode of Inside the Brig. In this series of episodes, we'll be joined by members of the squad, uh, the backroom staff, ex-players and, and much more. Now joining us this week is a newly appointed Brig skipper, Macaulay Wilson. So without further ado, uh, let's uh, bring Macaulay in, shall we? Hi, Maka. Hope you're keeping well, pal. How are we? You all right? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks for joining us, pal. It's, um, it's great to catch up with you. I know it's been, obviously, what, five months now since the curtailment of the of the season. We've had lockdowns. We've had, all, we've had all sorts going on. Just what have you been up to, obviously, prior to the friendlies recently that we've been playing? Uh, to be fair, at the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm still working, so I'm, I'm, I'm busy, but it's hard, to, it's hard to motivate yourself, you know, to get out and do stuff, especially especially when you're not like, like you're back, you're not you're not back like full time in a way. So you're not you're not training all the time. You just you're getting in one time a week, then playing on a playing on a Saturday. So it's hard sometimes. Yeah, sports are the gaffer. After we had we had a we had a behind closed doors friendly with Kendall, um, what a few weeks ago, and it was sort of the first football that the lads have played for three or four months and it was just an excuse to get the lads out, get the lads back together, gelling together again and, yeah. and a, a, bit, a bit more of just a kick about but it was it was great to to see the lads again and um, we've played what, three or four pre-season games now, yeah. just how have you found those so far? No, like like you said, it's, it's good, everyone's like, it's good to get back together because we're, we're a close-knit group anyway, so we look like since even at the start of lockdown when we weren't even doing anything last like season, we were all talking every day we talked to each other no matter what, it's always it's always been like a brig. Like I've been there three years, three years I think, and it's the best dressing room I've, I'll ever be in. Do you know everyone gets on with each other, we're all mates. Um, but it's good, to, it's good to be back playing football, even though everyone's like rusty and stuff. It's so good to be back because everyone loves it. I suppose we're not really used to. I mean, you've been playing football most of your life, and we've not really had. You've just gone from season to season, having having a month or so off, and then back to it. But we've had December was the last time we played football, and then there's been nothing up until May June. We've had a few kickabouts and stuff, but there's yeah. not really been any competitive stuff for for five months. So we're not really used to this situation. No, no, it's, it's, I think everyone's in the same boat unless you mm. unless you're full time. So everyone's in the same boat. You just got to get on with it. Like you just got to try and stay positive and stuff. And we're, we're, we're so close now, aren't we, like, to get back? And hopefully the fans are back and stuff. Yeah, it was a, it was a strange old season last season. When I spoke to the gaffer at Kendall, he said, without being disrespectful in, in, in a good way, that it was a good good that the season ended early because we're having a, I'm not saying a mirror of a time, but we struggled to get results despite playing some good football. I mean, I was at the, I was at the Gainsborough game towards the end and... It was a game which we dominated. Ended up losing somehow, but we had chance after chance. Just couldn't find that cutting edge in front of goal, and that's what the gaffer alluded to. Actually, said that's what we lacked lately. Just that killer instinct, that that yeah. um, that touch, that hit, and just just been lacking goals really. Yeah, it's it was a weird one to like last like obviously last season. Um, I think I, I don't know how many games we played, but most of the games you, you're so frustrated because I felt you feel like you dominated. All the games, like possession wise, because like million hills they've come in, and they've said play, play from the back, like don't, don't force balls, just keep it, keep it easy and stuff like that. And we've we've dominated games, but like you said, we lack that cutting edge sometimes. Where at that games we game, I think I think I hit the post once, um, we hit the I think we hit the bar once, we hit the post again, and we had we had, we had about twenty shots. And they, they, we make one mistake kind of thing at the back and they, they score in the last minute. It's, that's, that was just how it was. But I think you learn, you learn from it, don't you? Like, I was out with my injury for two years, so I came back in this year. And I, even though we're losing, I just love being back playing football. But you need to win because it's, a bit, it's like a business game, isn't it? Yeah, and it's obviously, we mentioned the break and how long of a break it is. We can use this as a sort of way to right those wrongs from last season and get, obviously, we, we're, tight, we're a tight-knit group anyway, but sort of just eradicate last season. It's, it's done now, it's gone. And we've got, what, three, four months now to work on proper pre-season. Obviously, fitness and stuff plays a big part. And obviously, yeah. the gaffer wants to obviously slow things down now in terms, you don't want to be playing too many friendlies before the season begins. 
No, no. You want? Do you want to at the same time? Yes, stay focused and stay switched on, but at the same time, you don't want to overwork yourselves. No. Uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a hard one because we all like I want to go back now if we could, but mm. you've got to think you're playing how many games you play in the season. You don't want to play. You don't want to play every week from now until next next June or whatever it is next May. You be you. That's why our injuries happen and stuff like that. But the sooner we're back, sooner the better for us. I think because we all we we're all chomping at the bit to get back and do well for Millie and Hilsey. And I suppose I suppose it does you it does you good as well to play some competitive friendlies in in say July. We've announced one today actually against Chorley on the uh, on yeah. the thirteenth of July. That should be a, that should be a really good game because obviously yeah. they'll be they'll be keen to get their season started as well. Mm-hmm. They they that like we play in most most pre season so and they're always very good, fit, strong, play play kind of play route one. So as a defender, you, it's a test for yourself. Um, but we played. I think we played the team last year, and they and they were just a bit too much for us. I don't. I don't know what it was. They were. They were a bit sharp and stuff. But they, they're, they're higher in the league. But there's no excuse. We want to give it a proper good goal this year. I think, hundred percent. Yes, obviously with uh, the news that you've uh, got the captaincy, that must be something that you're absolutely delighted about. Um, obviously, you're taking over the mantle from a from a club legend. Yeah. Um, who's who's moved on now? So, just how would you assess? Obviously, how did it come about? Really, did did Millie just ring you up and say, "I want we want you to be the the captain moving forward"? Well, like to be fair, because I've been injured and stuff, I I weren't expecting it at all or anything. Mm. Like, I, I I'd say I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a, I think I'm a leader on the pitch. Like I like to talk to people, but um, I weren't I definitely weren't expecting it. I, I, if I remember rightly. He he messaged me saying, "Maka, I need to, I need to, I need to uh, speak to you. We ring me later." So my instant thought, "Oh, what have I done now? Like, what have I done wrong?" So I was, I was flapping it a tiny bit, but then, then I rang him saying, "What's up, mate?" He's like, he explained, "Laws is leaving and stuff, um, and I want, I want you to be my captain." And I said, "Mate, I've always like, I've always what everywhere I play, I want to be like the captain, the leader kind of thing." So I was, I was, I was over the moon to be fair. But I think I think they had they had an option for a few few of the lads. Like Spoons was captain whilst when I was injured. Spoons was captain when Lowell's weren't there, and and he, he was a great captain and stuff. And Marlow as well, who's been there for years. But I am. So you've been at, you've, so you've been at the club, mate. You've been at the club now a couple of years. Um, initially it was on it was on a loan from when you were at Blackpool. Yeah. Um, did you sort of fall in, in love with the club at that at that point and happy to make a return when you did uh, come back? Full time. When 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 I first came in, when I was eighteen, I think it was, we played off Osset away, Osset away, and obviously I've never been really around men's football. I was in at Blackpool mm. and stuff, but it weren't like anything I'd, I thought it would be. So I played against Osset away. I made an assist and I scored my, a pen on my debut. Then the coach, oh no, after the game we always sing a brig song. It's the te- uh, Station Road, I think it is. That's the name. We always sing it. And it, and you get goosebumps and stuff, because I've never seen that in my life. I didn't know the songs, and I was just clapping, buzzing, and that. And on the coach, home, everyone's having a drink, singing, and you just, you just, you just, you do fall in love with that team. And I think I could only have three months, like of loans, then I won't be allowed to go anywhere else. So I, I think I had two, three f- one month loans. Then I couldn't. I weren't allowed back. I was good because I remember Gary Bowyer coming up to me and saying, "You do know you can't go back there again." I was like, "Oh, I thought I was going to go for the season, but then made my debut at Blackpool, then went to Fylde and won the league. So it weren't weren't always a bad thing, but it would have been nice to do a full season there because we were top of the league when before I left, kind of thing. We were flying. So going from youth football and playing in the Northern Premier League, just just what was the physicality side of that like? Obviously. It is it is quite a difference. It is quite a phys- It is a very physical league, uh, the league that we play in. Does that play a major part? Do you reckon you have to be, you have to be built, uh, you have to get stuck in, don't you, in this, in this yeah, league? Like, it, it was. Um, I've never I never played men's football before I came to Brick. So mm. I played the youth team for Blackpool, and um, when I first came and stuff, and I, I played against like an eighteen stone winger, 
<laughs> so you, you can't run, but he, he, he'll like to kick me and like pinch me and stuff like that. I was like, what? What's this? But but you do. I'm 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 the type of guy to get stuck in anyway. Like I'm not scared to to put a foot in and stuff. I've always been like that all my all my life. So it, I didn't I didn't mind it. So obviously during during your time at the Brig, now you played under a few under a few different managers. All got their own. On different regimes, just just re- your relationship with Millie is a unique one, isn't it? You've got a great relationship with a gaffer. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he had a f- fantastic playing career himself, so he knows. But not just that, is it? He's a great man manager, he's a great person to pull you to one side and and treats everyone equally. So, just to, what's it been like uh, working with Millie? Well, I've, I've known I've, Millie brought me in to Blackpool when I was when I was fifteen. He he signed me. To cont- I think he got in touch with my mum and said. Listen, we're taking. I've just been released from Man United, so Millie's Millie's took me in. Then since then, and I'm good. I'm very good. I'm best mates with his son Jordan, and since then, me and Millie have always got on. Like, played with him at Brig. That's how we got closer. Played playing with right. each other. Now I, I won't I won't lick M- Millie's bum, but he's one of the better players <laughs> I've ever played with. Like technically wise, like, it's it's ridiculous. But as a manager, you, everyone will say it. You just know, like, when he was playing, you knew Millie was going to be a great manager for someone. And luckily, he's our manager because his sessions and everything are top notch. Like, everyone, everyone enjoys coming to training. You don't, you won't, you rarely get that in non league. People don't want to train, but you do want to train under Millie because it's so enjoyable. It's hard, but you've always got the ball out, so it makes it enjoyable. Yeah, he's got he's got that respect as well, not just as a player, but as a coach. He knows all the right. He's got some great connections in within football. Yeah. And obviously, as as a manager, he's got the respect of the rest of the managers in the league, and obviously, the teams he used to he used to play for, and that and that certainly uh, does help him and and the lads really. Yeah, yeah. He's um, everyone everyone knows him, doesn't he? He's he's mm. he likes to have banter and stuff. I he's he's just the perfect person to work for him play with at the time but I wish it was just a bit longer I could have played I think I played with him for two seasons got promoted to break with him so you mentioned about your early days and, and, and signing for Manchester United as a, as a young lad obviously you are a United fan mm. so just, just tell you was that you, you you seem you've supported all your life and, and they come forward just just what was that like and how did it all happen really I think I, I think I was like I, when I first started, I was about five when I first started playing football. Wow. Then um, I went to London Juniors. Went to London Juniors and my, luckily my coach, whose name was Neil Nipper, he was a scout for United in so sort of like development centres. So at the, like age, of, age of six, I went down to the development centres, went all the way through there, got signed on at nine. Then I went from nine to the, to the under-15s. United, but but at the time you don't you don't realize how lucky you are in that position. If you get what I mean, like as a kid you don't you don't sink in like now. I'd I'd love to just train on the pitches and stuff because they're like carpets. You you don't appreciate stuff like that as a kid. I suppose though, playing for Man United, wearing the kit and all that, you, you must the confidence as a young lad. You must have been quite a confident young lad, knowing that you you're playing for such a big club, and then obviously moving on to Blackpool as well. Uh, you must have been your confidence levels at that point must have been sky high, really. Um, do you know what? I've always I've always been quite a humble guy in my football, right. so I've always I've always I've never bragged about being at United and stuff during school. Never used to do that. I used to hate I hate it now. People asking me how house football going. I hate it. So if you're having a beer on a Saturday, I'm saying oh how's football. I don't like talking about out of football. Because it, I just don't like talking my, talking about myself in that way about football. I, I, some people might think I do, but I, I feel like I, I, I'm quite humble about it. So obviously you, you joined Blackpool at what what the age of fifteen or so. Um, 15, yeah. You've had you've had some great times there. Obviously you've you captain the the under eighteens. Uh, you made your, your senior debut. You actually got mad of the match. I remember against Everton, mm-hmm. uh, Everton the twenty ones, which you, it went to a penalty shootout. Is that right? Yeah, I, I think, remember. I think it, we drew one one and went to pens. Yeah, that game must really stand out for you, though. A great night and obviously a great performance, and to put in that sort of showing 
uh, much to give you self confidence and self belief moving forward from that. The um, I didn't I didn't I didn't know I was playing until we we went up there during the day, had our pre match and stuff. Then we had a meeting for the game. I didn't I didn't know I was playing. So he's put the team sheet up on a big board in the hotel, and he's thought I'm um, obviously playing. But I preferred it like that because I wouldn't have been thinking of overthinking if you told me the day before. But it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a bit of a dream, to be fair, because not, not everyone can say they played on Goodison Park and, and score, even though it was a penalty shootout. But it's, it's yeah, it, must been an absolute, it must have been an absolute buzz, though. Obviously, you, you're delighted just to be part of the team, but to not yeah. just know that you're starting, but I suppose that, that made you put that in sort of performance where, right, I've been pit now, I need to show the gaffer why he's picked yeah. me. Sort yeah. of thing, and you really did. Hundred percent, because I thought in training, there's some of the lads from the first team at, at Blackpool at the time were saying you'll get your chance and stuff. Because I, I was, mm. I was, I didn't feel like as an 18 year old coming from the scores, I didn't feel like I was at the bottom of the pile, like talent wise in 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 the squad. I thought I should have got a chance a bit earlier, being honest with you, because they had a few injuries at right back. But the the, the gaffer obviously chose to play a centre half at right back or whatever at the time, but. Um, yeah, I thought I thought I, obviously I thought I did well, and I thought I'd get a proper chance after that. But football's football; it's all about opinions. At the end of the day, it must it must have uh, helped your development. Obviously, you were you were captain of the under 18s for quite a while. You scored a lot of goals from fullback, actually. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well. I mean, you can probably tell us how, how quite how many, but. Uh, you, you can play that like you look at yourself now. You can play in various positions. You can play in the middle of the pitch. You can play centre back. You can play full back. Quite um, you're quite adaptive in in that sense. Yeah, I feel like I, well. I started off as a centre mid, then I went. I got chucked back at United to uh, defence. But I, I can. One of my main things is I, like like main attributes. I feel like I can read the game quite well. So that's why I've been. Mm. I can play centre centre back. I'm quite aggressive. I can read the game well. I'm all out on the ball, but um, you just, you just, you just to like being at United for what ten year, ten years, nine years. You you just learn because you've been coached by the best, the best managers. Then when you come out United, I'm getting taught by Millie, who's been been at the top himself with Everton and stuff. So you just, you just, you just listen. You got to learn. You got to practice. I think, and you just pick stuff up and you get. If, you, if someone chucks you in the centre mid, you've got to do the job. And I feel like I could I could do the job. Yeah, I suppose those experiences like United and Blackpool have really helped you. I mean, when you were in the senior setup at Blackpool, I can imagine some of the senior players had lots of advice for you and helped you along the way, yeah. um, developing as as a as a young prospect and to then uh, becoming a really good player. Yeah, so when I first moved up, we went to first thing we we did as a team, we went to Scotland, St Andrews. We we went to, so we went there for I think about a week and a half. We had our own rooms and stuff, and that's it's like a bonding session. So you train every day, pre season, normal pre season, but you're in a different different like you're in Scotland, um, and you had players like Danny Pugh, who's been at United, played for United, Colin Doyle. Um, there, there's, there was a few, but I can't I can't remember who. But there was a, there was a, there was a few few lads who have had a big like a very good career, and they they're just normal lads when you when you speak to them. They're not they're not big time. They're not this. They're not that. But that they do help you because I when I first went out, I was a sh- I was a shy lad, and you 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 bound to be as a seventeen eighteen year old going into a senior team, but they they take me too far to and they took took me under the wing and. That brings out your confidence. So you mentioned your first proper goal at, um, at men's football was was here at Brig on Law, uh, yeah. but you moved on to AFC Fylde for a, for a short while. Just how was that? Fylde, I enjoyed enjoy Fylde because we were we were fighting for the title. Um, the, I, I, the game I played against Everton, it was literally three three days later. They they said they want to sign me, so I was a bit I was a bit annoyed that I didn't get more of a chance. At Blackpool, but they were fighting for playoffs. The season that was the season they went up from League Two, so they were they were going for it. So they're not going to chuck it. They might not chuck an eighteen year old. And some managers do, some managers don't. So I think I couldn't have asked for a better better move though. Out of out of the football league kind of thing. So I went to Files, which is it's five minutes from my house. 
Um, top, we're top of the league, but <laughs> it was enjoyable to be fair. Yeah, so during your, during your spell so far at Brig, you played alongside some great players. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the manager and his and his contacts and his connections. Obviously, George Thomason played there on loan, but uh, whilst yeah. whilst at Bolton, and obviously now he's um, won promotion with Wanderers to to League One. Just how happy are you for George? Obviously, he's he's played a crucial part in the. Uh, I'm a Bolton fan myself, so I watch every every game, and he's played a major part in in the promotion. Honestly, for George, he, d- he deserves everything he gets. He, um, I remember him as a as a, he's, I think he was 14 at the time. I was at Blackpool two years above him. He was a quiet, small lad, didn't get taken on. So he started, he started from the literally the bottom, um, playing for FC Blackpool, going to Longridge, doing well there. He was at the time he was still at Millie's Academy, so he's full time with Millie. Um, then he then he signed from for Bolton, I think, from Longridge, and he came to here and, he, and he's. Do you know what? He just he just shot up, he literally shot up. I knew when he was at Longridge, he, we all said, "Oh, because we played him, he's a great footballer and stuff. He's good class on the ball." Then he just needed to, he just needed to grow a tiny bit and fill out a bit. And when he came back this time round for Brig, he he was that. He was tall. He was strong. Getting stuck in, class on the ball, and he and he deserves everything he gets because he's such a nice lad. He's in my car school, and he's you don't have a, no one has a bad word to say about him. He deserves everything he gets. I suppose it just shows you you can have the game, but not quite have the. If you're not quite got the confidence there, it can hold you back. But when when you're a confident, when you're confident, yeah, heading into a game, it makes you such a better player, doesn't it? You, you play your best football when you're confident and you back yourself. When when you're down and stuff, you you beat yourself up, and if you do a mistake, you beat yourself up. And when you when you're mentally not like straight for a game, you um you won't play the as best as you could. But like for example, George, he was playing his best football because he, because he was getting the he was getting the backing from us, the team, the the gaffer, the assistant. Everyone was backing him to do it, get on the ball, get us playing, do this, do that, and he was so good at it. And I think I think we missed him for the last few games. Yeah, we obviously had a, had a few new additions in the summer. Obviously, Jamie Thomas being one of them. Uh, uh, JT as he's known to the lads. Um, just to, obviously, I've, I've seen him at. Um, AFC Blackpool. Um, just, just, just. How would you describe him and his playing style? And, and for the for the fans who have not seen him yet, how he likes to play. J, JT, um, I've known JT for years. He was at when I first known him. He was at Burnley, and you just you watch clips of him, and he, some of the things were ridiculous what he did. Some of the skills, some. Of, but that is, um, it's about. I think, I think, I think he can tell you himself. It's about time he stepped stepped up at a level again. Nothing, nothing against AFC Blackpool because they, they play some great football and stuff. But it's about time he took that next step. Then see how he gets on this. He, there's no, there's no doubt he'll do class for us because he's he's an hard, he's a hard worker. He's great on the ball. Gets stuck in. Can finish. Got he's got so much quality. Um, then see how he gets on. He but he seems to be enjoying it. He's in our car school as well. He, he seems to be uh, loving it. To be fair to him, so I'm happy for him. Well, as I mentioned before, we've had a few pre-season games now behind closed doors games. Last time out against Chorley under 21s, a, a bit of a probably I wouldn't say the strongest test we've had in pre-season so far, but it was certainly a, an interesting game. You got on the score sheet, of course, of a, of a decent header. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, the the young lads weren't they? I think it's the 21 side. I think so. Mm. I, I reckon if they do well, you don't know. We 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 could be looking at them. Do you know what I mean? It's a chance for them. So. But I didn't have the best against you. If I gave away a mistake in the first, I think 10, 10, 15 seconds, and they scored from it. But I was that I was happy to score and redeem myself to make it one one. I suppose it's good though. We're not playing so long. You're gonna have those moments where you're not yeah. fully, fully concentrating and not fully at it for ninety minutes. When you're not playing week in week out, it is difficult. But that's what these games are for, and I'm sure we're gonna have quite a few games now before the season gets underway. Yeah. Um... Like you say, we, you try, you try, you try things in in games like that. So I was, I think I was a tiny bit rel- too relaxed in a way. So if it's a league game or a big game, I'd I'd probably just boot it first fifteen minutes. But you you, you just it, it, it takes a while to get used to it again. And you're training one time a week. You're not really seeing much of the ball other than that one time a week. So you're working 
coming home, going to sleep, etc. Um, but once we get going, we, all the boys will be flying. I can promise that. So obviously, we mentioned lockdown and just how tough it's been. Obviously, we've not had the fans uh, in stadiums for quite a while. Have you got? Have you got a message for the Brig fans watching this who are going to be packing packing the stadiums out when when we're ready to go again? The um... They're all, they're all they're, all the fans are great. Um, everyone gets on with everyone at the club, and it'd be good to see them all back shouting. Um, but it's about I think it's about time they all came back, uh, as we we've missed them, especially especially towards the uh, clubhouse end in the second half. We we always we always we always do well towards that towards the uh, end of the game when they're all all behind that goal. So as you mentioned, the way, the way we ended the last season. How we we were playing well in games, dominating games, like you say. If we can get that that finishing aspect and taking chances, then we can be a dangerous outfit next season. One hundred percent. There's no there's no doubt that the uh, talent's not there. It's just it's just um, I can't really put my finger on it. It's just we're just missing a, t- a summit. Like, like we had Al- Ali was injured. He came back and he looked good. Um, but it's 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 a hard one because we know how good we could be. We're, we're, it's a young team now as well. It's a very young team, so so we should we should we should, honest honestly we should be flying come come start of the season, especially with the pre season games we've got lined up. I know I know a few. Um, we we'll we'll be tested in them, and it'll just only make us better and stronger and fitter. So we'll be at it. Yeah, we mentioned confidence earlier on, Maka, and obviously, when you, I think it, we, we won one in our last eight. So when yeah. when you're down there and when you're not getting the wins, it's what did the gaffer have to try and do to to lift the lads for the next game and keep and keep on going, really? But like I like I said before, Millie's Millie's just Millie and Hills are just ha- like happy happy people. So they don't they don't come in on training with like sulking, shouting at us. They don't they don't they didn't do that because because we were playing well. But Millie was taking the credit for the losses where it's not in playing. So, so as as a team, there's a few of us who said we we like we felt sorry for Millie in a way because we're letting we're letting him and Ilsey down and the rest of the coaches staff we're letting them down. Um, but it, it's just honestly, it's a strange. Way. It just weren't going our way. I don't think we play, we're we I, I look on Twitter after games and stuff and read the reports from the fans and, and he was saying it's the same again. Brig dominate, two two sloppy goals conceded, and we've lost. It's just it's just how it was, and we but we've got to learn. We've got we've got to learn from that, and we we need to we need to, we do need to be better. I suppose it's good to go get those out of the way though, knowing that you yeah. can play well and sort of not win. It's a case of taking those frustrations out now, and you've been through those you've been through those experiences in those dressing rooms after games where you've not got the results you wanted. It's about keeping that in your head and and using that as inspiration, really, to to go and kick on now. Yeah, like 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 I said, you got we, we'll always stick together. The team always stick together. There won't be there won't be any nastiness towards anyone. Yeah, you have an argument if we get beat because the tensions are running high and stuff. You do you do have a little bite at each other, but after that, you you texting again, you you hugging each other and stuff and. It's it's I I you can only say that you're gonna turn good, but you've got to do it on the football pitch, haven't you? At the end of the day, if you don't do it on the football pitch, it's just all words, no actions. Yeah, so obviously you've been wearing the armband already during pre-season, but when the season does kick off, is that when it really kicks in that you that you're captain of this club? Yeah, I've not i not I think I played one one game when I was captain last last season away at Witten, I think it was. And it you just, you feel you put, it's like a privilege that like you've got it on your arm, because um, you feel like the leader of the team. Um, you've got the trust from your, your gaffer, your your coaching staff. You've got the trust from them, so it's it is a privilege to wear it. But I can't wait to get going and play competitive games while being captain. Obviously, trying to win games for the club. Uh, Macro, it's been great speaking to you tonight, and uh... yeah, cheers, mate. Also, I'd like to say uh, rest in peace to Dino as well. He was. Um, Member of our team last year, and it's and it's sad that he's, he's he's gone. So rest in peace, Adina. Yeah, we'd all like to echo those those same yeah. sentiments.
Yeah. Cheers, Maka. Thanks, Paul. Cheers, mate. Bye.